Hello, I'm Alexander, and today I'm going to be reading the second book, The um, Start of the Hunger Games, and hope you enjoy it. Ladies and gentlemen, let the 75th Hunger Games begin. Between the spokes all is water. The water and a pair of tributes. That's it then, the 12 spokes, each with two tributes balanced on metal plates between them. The other tribute on my watery wedge is Old Wolf from District 8. He's about as far to my right as the land strip on my left. Beyond the water, wherever you look, a narrow beach and then dense greenery. I scan the circle of tributes looking for Peter, but he must be blocked from my view by the cornucopia. I catch a handful of water as it washes in and smell it. Then I touch the tip of my wet finger to my tongue. As I suspected, it was salt water. Just like the waves Peter and I encountered on our brief tour of the beach in District 4, but at least it seems clean. There are no boats, no ropes, not even a bit of driftwood to, cl to cling to. No, there's only one way to get to the cornucopia. When the gong sounds, I don't even hesitate before I dive to my left. It's a longer distance than I'm used to, and navigating the waves takes a little more skill than swimming across my quiet lake at home. But my body seems oddly light, and I cup through the water effortlessly. effortlessly. Maybe it's a salt. I pull myself, dripping, onto the land strip and sprint down to the sandy stretch for the cornucopia. I can see no one else converging from my side, although the gold horn blocks a good portion of my view. I don't let the, the thought of adversaries slow me down though. I'm thinking like a career now, and the first thing I want is to get my hands on a weapon. Like last year, the supplies were spread out quite a distance around the cornucopia, with the most valuable closest to the horn. But this year, the booty seemed to be piled at the seven metre high mouth. My eyes instantly home on a golden bow just an, in arm's length, and I reach it and I yank it th free. There's someone behind me. I'm alerted by. I don't know, a soft shift of sand or maybe just a change in the air currents. I pull an arrow from the stealth that's still wedged in the palm and I arm my bow as I turn. Finnick, glistening and gorgeous, stands a few metres away with a trident poised to attack. A net dangles from his other hand. He's smiling a little, but the upper muscles in his body are, too, are rigid in anticipation. You can swim too, he says. Where did you learn to swim dis where did you learn that in District 12? We have the big bathtub, I answer. You must, he says. Do you like the arena? Not particularly, but you should. They must have built it especially for you, I say I have an edge of bitterness. It seems like it, anyway, with all the water. When I bet only a handful of the victors can swim, and there was no pool in the training centre, no chance to learn. Either you come in here a swimmer, or you better really be a fast learner. Even participation in the internal bloodbath depends on being able to cover 20 metres of the water. That gives District 4 an enormous advantage. For a moment, we are frozen, sizing each other up. Our weapons, our skill. And Phoenix suddenly grins. Lucky thing we're ad allies, right? Sensing a trap, I'm about to let my arrow fly, hoping it finds his heart before the trident implays me. When he shifts his hand and something on his wrist catches my, the sunlight. A solid gold bangle patterned with flames, the same one I remember on Haymitch's wrist the morning I began training. Briefly, I considered that Finnick could have stolen it to trick me, but somehow I know this isn't the case.